we got an MGTD that needs wheel cylinders, and hey, we got new wheel cylinders. Let's put them on. For those of you who have been with us for a little while, you'll recognize this car as a TD that we brought in as a stalled restoration project a few months ago. And we got into looking at it, but that's as far as we gotten because a friend of mine passed away and I was working, I put it aside to work on his MGA so that the widow could sell it. And we've just now gotten to the point where we've caught up from that backing up everything in the shop. And we can get back onto this now. We did take the drums off and take a look at everything back when it first came in the shop, but I had to put them all back on to move the car off the lift because I needed the lift for something else, for actually a couple of things since then. So I figured for anybody who's new to the channel or looking up this video just for how to do it, we are gonna go ahead and go through the process of showing how to take the drums off. Basically, the nut here is actually a three quarter uh, Whitworth, but inch and a quarter SAE will work just fine on it. It's tight enough to not cause any damage. So we gotta take the nut off. And then this is a bit of an interference fit a lot of times. So if, if it doesn't wanna come off, a three jaw gear puller, Get a hold of the edges in here and pull it off, but this one's gonna come off since we already had it off. But, so that made it easy, but sometimes you'll have to pull them. We will have to do the front, definitely. Back, time, back ones sometimes slide off easy, sometimes don't. So now we need to take the shoes off and we need to get the brake hold down springs off. Now the traditional brake hold down spring tools don't usually work very well on these style. But if you have a pair of needle nose locking pliers, you can get a hold of it right here, a small pair, and then you can clamp it, push in and turn and get it to unhook pretty easily. Now, they can be a little fiddly and I'll show you why here in a moment. Now these you can just basically just These guys go through here and you got to get them in and turn them. Sometimes when you go to turn them, it's all about just getting them to line up there. And you just got to feel for it. And once you figure that out, they cop out pretty easily. But until you figure it out, you can fart with it and fiddle and get upset at it. Let me tell you that. First time I ever did it, I did. So now that the shoes are off, we need to take the wheel cylinder out. And to get it loose, we have a there's a parking brake cable here. Now this particular one, I've already taken the nut off, had a bolt going through there. You don't want to do that. It's supposed to have a clevis pin like these going through there with a cotter pin going through it. And that's how it's going to go back together when we do it. Once you get this disconnected, then you need to get the line disconnected. And it's a 5 16 Whitworth. And so it's got this banjo bolt going through there and they call it a banjo bolt because it goes through what they call a banjo fitting. That's on the back side. There's a copper crush washer on either side of that. And then you gotta get this boot off of here. So I was struggling to get this off of here because the wheel cylinder was frozen and the arm wouldn't move, giving me enough room to get it off. So the wheel cylinder is kind of trapped in here. Now the way to get them out is you, gotta, you got to pull on the lever and extend the piston out in order to get this to drop through here. But then you need to push this back in to get it to actually come all the way out because of this hits in here won't allow it to tilt enough. Now, all of this stuff was fresh 15 years ago when he started restoring this thing, but it's been sitting for so long. That's what we got now from it sitting with the fluid in the system all these years and not being used. Of course, this will happen over time even if you're using it, but just sitting 
is harder on everything on a car than, than being used regularly. So since it's hard to get the camera back in there, it's easier to show this out like this. So for the banjo bolt, you have two different washers. One's larger and the other one's smaller. So the larger one goes on first and sits over that step. Then it goes through the banjo bolt with the smaller one on the other side and then into the wheel cylinder and then you tighten it down. So that's how all that goes together. Now they only sell these for the TD as a full set, but these are the same washers as used on MGB, MGA, everything else. These two washers are super common sizes on these cars. Now before you actually bolt on any of this stuff on there, you gotta put the boot on first. And once it's back there, you just get this boot slid through there. And then you're gonna pull that up over top of these against the back side of the uh, backing plate. And then this is gonna actually go up under these, under here where this, there's slots there it goes in. Much easier to show you that here than to try to do it back there when you're fumbling around and all you're gonna see is my fingers and not really see much what's going on. But I think it's a lot easier to put these in by just taking the piston out. That way you're not messing with this getting in your way of getting it in there. So you can just drop it in, make sure this goes in behind and then It looks like we got a slight clearance issue. These may not be machined quite enough. Seeing that a lot anymore on wheel centers. So yeah, I'll have to do a little filing on that to make sure it slides nice and easy. And then we can continue. So basically you want this little piece here to slide up in behind there and for this to be able to slide back and forth so where that goes all the way up. Now it looks like in this case, what we got here, if you look here, this probably was supposed to have been machined across here just a little bit. So we got a slight step there and that's probably what's causing it. Now, while I could have just filed this with a file until I got where I wanted to with it, which is what probably most of you at home would do if you were doing this, I did remember that I have this cheap little set of end mills here and I do have a drill press these can be chucked in a drill press. And since my drill press has a machinist vise on it, you can clamp it in there and, and use it very much like a mill. Now we tried to take some film of that, but we didn't get any sound. So we'll just throw a little clip here of me running it through there with some music behind it. Now my drill press is an old one and it's a cheap one. So it does have a little bit of a wobble in it, but with a little bit of careful setup, it works just fine for doing stuff like this because we're not talking about trying to keep everything within, you know, two, three thousandths tolerance. And some of you might say, well, wouldn't that be a little bit harder in the long run, setting it up? For me, no, I actually find it easier and quite frankly, more interesting to do it that way than to sit and file on this. But now that we got this done, it fits like it's supposed to, and we can continue putting this together. So this is the brake adjuster, and it's got little nibs down in there and notches in here. And this goes together like this, and you start out all the way down now this brake shoe goes into here, and as you turn this, and you hit each of the notches, that climbs out and pushes the brake shoe out, and that's how you pick up the slack and the adjustment. And this adjuster slides into the end of the piston like this. It gets captured between those. Now I have seen people with drums that are worn out 
put shims and stuff in here to try to get some extra adjustment. Um, you can also get, there's a guy that makes shoes that are extra thick where you can measure your drum and he can turn them down to suit whatever you're doing, but there's a little bit more expensive. Because of course these brake drums are no longer available for the bolt on wheels, only for wires. So you have to do a wire wheel conversion to a TD in order to get new brake drums. Now the only real hard part about this is that this always wants to fall out on you and just try to get everything lined up and put where you want it. You wanna make sure that screw is to the outside. I like to do it this way so that way we can get this in place. And then just pull this down and get it in there. And then reinstall the hold down shoes and the rear's ready to put the drum on. Now this would be a good time to note that the brake drum has a hole in it here. That hole is for access to that adjuster. Now when you put the wheels on, it also has a hole in it. Line up that hole to that hole when you put the wheel onto the car. That way, all you have to do is pop off the hubcaps, jack the car up, turn it till that hole lines up, and you can adjust the brakes without ever taking the wheels off. Now the front is actually very similar to doing the rears. There's not a huge difference, but the uh, nut on that is a 9 16 Whitworth. Once you get that off, this drum will not just pull off. You will have to pull it because the bearings are light, what they call a light interference fit. So I like using a three jaw gear puller. It's what I have to work with. And you can just and it shouldn't be terribly hard to get off. But you're not going to just pull it off by hand. Now in our case, the bearing stayed on the spindle on the inside. Now we're going to want to repack that probably in seals and all that stuff because even though it probably hasn't been used, it has been 15 years ago. So the biggest difference once you get the drum off of these on the front is really that it's got two wheel cylinders and two adjusters. So they're each working, one's working up, the other's working down, but, and they bolt on rather than are sliding like on the backside. Um, and then there's a crossover tube between the two and with the banjo bolts on both sides, but the bleeder only on one. But otherwise, it's the same thing as the back or, uh, or that doesn't have the hold down springs on the front either. So since the front has two adjusters, that means when you go to spin the wheel to do the adjustment, you could hit either adjuster, but you actually wanna make sure you check both adjusters. Don't just adjust one and go with good enough because sometimes you go to adjust the one, it doesn't wanna go up, Go to the other side and you'll get another click out of it and get what you want out of it. And you should do them evenly anyway, not just crank it all on the one. So yeah, do both, go back and forth, make sure you get even adjustments. Now I'm not gonna go through the process of actually changing all this stuff out because it's so similar to the rear. So that is wheel sonners on a TD and TF, they're exactly the same, and the MGA is almost identical.